power settings. So now we want to go to control panel again. I should have closed that. Power options. Here it is. So under power options, we want to change our plan. Right now, balance is what it defaults to, and which is fine. You could leave it at that plan, unless you want to go and try the power saver one, which most people don't. Um, it doesn't save you that much power from what I've read, but uh, and it makes it a little bit harder to deal with. So let's change the plan. So under the balanced option, we can change our existing plan. And on our existing plan, I like to make changes. So here, I do want to the display to go off but 10 minutes is a little too quick so I will set that to at least 20 minutes I never want the computer to go to sleep because sleep causes all sorts of problems it takes it has to basically do a soft restart files that you left open could be corrupted um, I click never on that okay then we do advanced power settings. Let me save this first. Saves that. And then I'm in advanced power settings. Now in advanced power settings, now you've got these little check boxes again. And we have to go down to hard disk. Right, we're on hard disk, right? Turn the hard disk off after so many minutes. Now, if you have a spinning hard drive, you might want to consider turning it off, but not in 20 minutes. That's inactivity time. I would change that to at least an hour. And uh, if you have a solid state drive, you never turn that off. You would just put that as never on one extreme or the other. There is a never. So you pick that choice. And we click on apply. USB settings is another one you want. Got. Okay. So under USB, again, there's another set of options. We don't want to suspend USBs. So at this point, it's enabled. We want to click on that and then click on the little down arrow and pick Disabled. So we're disabling the ability to suspend power to the USB. Okay. Highly recommended. Otherwise, you could have something there that's critical to what you're doing, and it will lose power when the, the system were to go into a suspend mode. Shouldn't go into a suspend mode normally if we got the option set right, but just in case, turn this one off. And save again. Apply again. Now, the other thing now is make sure Windows has activated. We've been on the network long enough, and sure enough, I come back. Windows is activated right here. So that's under the system settings as well. The first screen you come to. And that's what I told you before. Even though I did a complete load of Windows 10 on top of a Windows 7, since I had Windows 7 Pro legitimately installed, it automatically activated. I'm not going to do the motherboard BIOS but at this point you should make sure if it was a new system build that you uh, check that out as well different processes to update the motherboard BIOS is what I wanted to mention it here Windows updates now it probably kicked off by now but if it hasn't let's go ahead and kick it off you come down here to start you click the little gear for settings and the choice of Windows update is here I, it looks like it hasn't started yet, so um, let's go ahead and click this. And it's going to check for Windows 10 updates. There are quite a few of them until the new build comes out. I don't think this was the new build that I installed. I, I didn't double check when I made the USB stick, but I don't think it was. We'll see. Every six months or so. Microsoft releases a new build of Windows 10 and it includes all of the patches that they had prior to that. So all of the updates that are required by Windows would be included and you would, it wouldn't have to update them during a Windows update. You're going to see this quite often, definition for Windows Defender, that's the built-in Windows 10 antivirus. That changes like every day.
one of the cumulative, cumulative patches take a while. So this next one, after the malicious software removal tool, is going to take a while. So there might be multiple patches to the .NET framework, which is a component required by many of the applications that run on Windows. So it has to go ahead and apply all of those patches. Security patches are considered the highest priority, but there's other patches that are, are also automatically applied. Now see here it says pending a restart. So what I'm going to have to do now for it to continue is I'm going to have to do a restart. It looks like it's not even kicking off the other one at this point. So let me go ahead and do another restart now. Now there could have been other patches that were installed uh, that I just didn't see. Usually you can feel it when it's happening because you're trying to do something and the system slows down quite a bit. Uh, yes, shortly after a new release, it starts the automatic update process. Again, the time it starts varies, not just by the time on your computer, but the time that the servers are busy as well, like Microsoft. That'll sometimes delay it as well. And you'll suddenly be doing something and you'll feel the machine get really, really slow. If you were to do a task manager, you'll see that a Windows update is in progress. I'll show you. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. That's something you should know how to use anyway. So we'll log in here. That's because I clicked on that prompt. It automatically opens up a Microsoft advertisement. So I'll just close that. See if I right click down on the taskbar and I click task manager, you got a nice little tool here that pops up. Let's do more details, I'm not showing sure anything until we do that. And then you have several little functions that are available to you. This one's showing you the activity going on in your system. So you see here the CPU usage and percentage, the memory usage, the hard drive usage, and the network usage. And you can see these graphically as well. But first, you'll see it's done in this particular processes window that you enter into. It shows for each application that is running or that can run. And you can see which ones are chewing up resources heavily or not by the power usage that's the power of your CPU. But this thing here, the Catalyst Control Center Host Adapter, let me stretch that out and see what it, see more about it. Uh, monitoring program and application, they, they jump in every so often. But if we want to see it graphically, you click on Performance. And now you see graphically what's going on here. And you can look at a graph for CPU, which is the default. Then we can look at memory. We've only got four gigs of memory, four gigabytes of DDR2 memory. So it's going to chew up rather quickly. The disk itself, that's disk activity. It should match the blinking of the disk activity light. And then the Ethernet, the network activity, depending on what's going on there, you'll see that. Uh, there'll be uh, a graph generated for that. But I also like to look at startup. The startup shows things, every time you install some piece of software, it usually has an automated startup part so that when you go to run the application, it can come up a little bit quicker. Well, some of these can really impact your system. Like the Catalyst thing is the video adapter software. It has a startup impact that's high, which means that it's going to slow the system down quite a bit when it starts up. Now you could play with this. You can click on this and change it to different things, so you can disable it even. Usually it's not good to touch a video card adapter. This one drive I mentioned before, that is high. Matter of fact, this is probably a good time to go into the control panel now. 
go into programs and features and get rid of that. So if I click on Microsoft OneDrive, I could either right click on it and you see the menu for uninstall or I could just jump up here where it says uninstall. Either way works. I'm going to uninstall that OneDrive. It's double checking to make sure because it needs administrative access to do this. I'm going to say yes. It doesn't ask for a password though because I am the administrator. Some of these take a while to start up their deinstall. Be aware of anything down here in the bottom that's blinking in some way. That means that there's a hidden window behind there. I like to look as well to make sure that there's nothing there. And it's gone. It didn't even prompt me to fully install, deinstall, and so sometimes it'll pop up a window. You want to fully deinstall, you want to deinstall your profile, you want to deinstall your data. If you want to completely get rid of it, say yes to all that. But now we got a, we got this, and now we've lost, notice here in the background, we've lost the OneDrive from chewing up startup time. So we've improved performance in startup. These things usually don't last long, but you know, a bunch of them can really, really feel they, you know, it is a distributed uh, processor, so it's going to jump from one process to another. You get a bunch of highs they're all going to take a little slice of processor time and overall it'll delay how long it takes for all of them to complete and you'll see that the process overall time will delay your startup. With that I think we're good here. Let me go back into system update because we were pending an update. That's the reason we did a restart. Come back here, system update it got an error, which means it tried to install. I think the automatic updates are now trying to happen, but it couldn't do that because something was already in progress, probably when I was, in, when I was installing the updates. So let me do a retry, and it'll check again. Sometimes you have to do this several times in order to get all of the updates until it finally comes back and say there are no updates. And even then, there it, the server itself might be you know, holding off what its throughput is because it's answering a lot of systems out in the world and it will uh, it will not give you the update that you think it should be. Okay, we're now back to that cumulative.net one. Okay, now it thinks I'm up to date, but just to double check, I'm going to click it again. The fact that it's not coming back to me immediately means there might be more updates. Nope. That's good. Okay. So now we got all the updates. And then the final thing I'd like to do is uh, make sure that my security is right. So I'm going to go into the control panel. I don't want to use this account, as I said earlier, to do things with on this computer. So I'm going to create another one. I'm going to go to user accounts. And I'm going to click on man. Well, first of all, let me give myself a picture. That picture is garbage. For now, I'll just go manage another account. I'm going to add a new user account. Okay, so adding a new user will be my normal account that I'm going to add. I got to click on this add someone else to this PC. So I click on this little plus. And again, I don't have this person's sign in information. You don't want to put an email in here. You want it to be a local account only. Add user without a Microsoft account. Once again, do that. Okay. In this case, the user will be David. And I have a different password that I will enter for this one. I'm going to re-enter it twice. And then I got into security questions. I'm going to use fake ones for now and I'm going to change them later. So don't count on these being uh, the real ones. Or scroll down.
George Washington. My childhood nickname. Um, okay. What do you think of my answers? Anyway. Now I have a new account. It says local account here. So at this point I can uh, go back to my accounts I believe. Okay we're good. Now I have two accounts. Let me show you what I mean. I've got David Admin as a local adminer. Admin. Manage another account. Now I see both accounts here. I have David under admin as a local account. Which I want it. Administrator password protected, and we have David as a local account, password protected. So we're done. And I believe that's, uh, that's all we have to do at this point. I, um, I thank you for watching this, and what I'd like you to do, if you can, and you have an account on YouTube, is please subscribe to my channel. And if you want to get automatic emails, you click on that little bell that's next to the subscribe button, and it will let you uh, do the same thing. That would be very helpful, and I appreciate you taking the time to watch this. Take care.